because uh, the president is waiting to watch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good, good. So welcome back again. Let's uh, continue with last week's journey. Last week we reached some, some place, eh? Uh, we're talking about a uh, future crisis. <laughs> crisis. I'm sure ne uh, last last week to this week, you guys have made decisions. You made choices. Yes. Anybody was a testimony? <laughs> <laughs> decisions and choices. Eh? Yeah. You become magisterial, uh, judicial. Uh, you're delivering your thinking in your space. Yeah. Instead of just clapping hands. So thank you so much. Welcome for uh, those who are in Singapore, <laughs> especially those who are in Singapore. Uh, welcome to those who are around the world and are watching. That's, that's the truth. There's some people who are around the world and are watching. They send me some messages, and I just thank God for you people, wherever you are. Sometimes even defying your time zones and joining us at this particular point. Uh, point. So I want to take you through something I'm calling seasons. Seasons. Let's call it seasons. Let's call it for those who love titles, seasons. Uh, seasons. Seasons. Uh, if you get out of this something like managing your seasons, that's okay. Uh, seasons. Let's try seasons. Um, so Paul tells Timothy in Second uh, uh, Timothy 4.2, he says, uh, preach the word. Be instant in what? In season and out of season. Yeah? Another version says, Timothy, you must be ready at all times, even if it is an even if it is an unexpected or inconvenient time for you to preach the word. I know we love this scripture in season and out of season, but Paul specifically is talking to Timothy about preaching. He said, Timothy, whether it's convenient for you or not, be instant in season and out of season. Are we clear? So, again, so let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 13. Luke 4, 13, Jesus is in the wilderness. How do you know? Luke 4, Mark 4. Luke 4 and Matthew 4. Jesus is in the wilderness. That is how you normally know. 4, 4. Luke 4, Matthew 4. Yeah? And the, the devil is tempting Jesus in the wilderness. And he has just done his third temptation, I think. And the Bible says, and when the devil had ended every temptation... Yeah? That's an interesting version. I had ended every temptation. In fact, another version says this. After the devil had completed the cycle of his temptations. Somebody can teach me that one. Eh? <laughs> so, and when the devil had ended every temptation, he left him temporarily. That's what, that's what the Bible says. King James says he left him for a season. He says he left him temporarily that... He left him what? Temporarily and sought a more opportune moment that was favorable for him to tempt him again. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So the key word there, he left him for a season. Another version says he left him temporarily to come again. Okay. Why was Jesus triumphant in those three temptations? It is written. It is written. It is written. So the enemy is going to reload. Jesus is loaded. <laughs> so you have to understand this since we're talking about seasons the devil is not omnipresent so he cannot stay for long in places he has no stronghold so let's try that again the devil is not what? omnipresent he cannot stay for long in places where he has no what? stronghold so strongholds are his real estate yeah so most of his attacks uh, are season based and season driven because he comes and finds, oh, now there's a home for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can, I can dock there. This person has believed differently concerning this issue. And it's comfortable for me. Uh -huh. Understanding? Yeah. So he's not only present, he cannot stay for long where there is no what? Stronghold that he has planted. Uh -huh. Same, same thing. God is omnipresent. So the devil isn't, but God is. Uh -huh. God is omnipresent. He also stays in places where his revelation is continually hosted. Are you understanding? Yes. God stays in places where his revelation is continually what? Hosted. Or God shows up. Or God is more visible. 
yeah, he's more visible in places where his revelation is continually what hosted. So, if you are, if you continue hosting God's revelation, God is always present with you. In fact, I normally used to say things like, "God is going to show up." Yeah, God is going to show up to you through you. Mm-hmm. God is going to show up to you through you. Why? Because He brings His light. And God loves light vessels. <laughs> the pun is intended. <laughs> God loves what? Light vessels. In him was life. And the life was what? The light of men. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I hope the guys who are out there are hearing, uh, can, can, can hear me. Yeah, they can hear me. Okay. So, so in the journey of our lives on the earth, we go through seasons. But sometimes we get or we encumbered with particular Warfare or attacks, the enemy attacks and comes. If he finds a stronghold, he docks. If he doesn't find a stronghold, you're just saying it is written, it is written, he has no space. Mm-hmm. You're driving him through the back gate, past the SQ, out of the compound. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding? Mm-hmm. So in the journey of process and maturity, God also initiates and can operate in seasons and faces. The same way the enemy left Jesus for a season, God also sometimes operates in what? Seasons and faces, not for his sick, but for your sick, because God does not stay in time. Mm. Are you understanding? Yeah. Not for his sake, but what? For your sake, because God does not what? Stay in time. So he operates. And sometimes that operation in seasons and faces is, is tied to our growing up and obedience. Mm. Clear? Yeah. It's tied to what? Our growing up and obedience. In fact, every phase and season in our lives, every phase and season in our lives is word-driven. Let's try that one. It's what? Word-driven or word-governed. Clear? So sometimes, it's not that you lose a season. You lose a governing word. So the enemy fights the word you host. Yeah? He doesn't steal your seasons. He distracts you from the word you host. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. <laughs> so every phase and season of our lives is what? Word-driven or revelation-governed. Yeah? So, what's, so when it's what we sometimes consider to be warfare, spiritual warfare, is actually the enemy contending with that governing word. Mm, yeah. Understand me? Mm-hmm. Contending that governing word. For that season. In fact, he's not omnipresent. He doesn't have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Sometimes you are so audacious and bold to reveal your plans. <laughs> Sometimes you're bold enough to, to say, ah, this is what God is doing in my life. Oh, that's what he actually was doing. Yeah, I thought he was doing ABCD. So you have a governing word. All of us in some way or another have a governing word, a governing idea, a governing notion, a governing what? Impression, because that's how God comes to us. God is not limited by how he comes to us. An impression, an idea, a notion. What most likely we would call a word or a prophecy. Yeah, it can dock in your heart through an idea. It can dock in your heart through a notion. Are you clear? So God, but that word should be taken with due attention. The value of the word that God deposits in your heart and mind takes more effect with the attention we give it. Are you clear? Yeah. So the enemy, the Bible says the enemy comes to do what? To steal the word. It says persecution comes for the word's sake. So this thing called time and seasons, he's not stealing a season per se. He's stealing what? The word that governs that season. <coughs> That's why last week we were talking about future crises. And we are saying a crisis is a place of judging. Yeah. He says you are in a place, what used to call you say you're in situ, you're paralyzed. So you're incapable of doing what? Judging. That is the crisis. Yeah. The crisis is not that place you've been thrown in. It is the state that dictates how you deal with that place you've been thrown in. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. So if you are paralyzed, it means you cannot meet out a judgment concerning what? That space. Judgments are vehicles of value. So you can say, I'm judging this circumstance to be A, B, C, D. Mm-hmm. Which means you have assigned that circumstance what? Some form of value. You can say, yes, factually this thing has happened. But truthfully, by his stripes I'm healed. Uh, are you understanding? Yes. 
So a judgment is, a, is what? Is an instrument of value. He says, he will, he will keep in perfect peace whose what? Mind is stayed on him. Why? You cannot say those scriptures when you're not in peace. When you're, when you're in peace, technically speaking, you have been thrown somewhere. Around you, everything is becoming what? Calamitous. So he said, no, no, Lord, you shall keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So you're saying, factually, I'm in a mess here. Mm -hmm. Things are hitting me left, right, and center, yeah? Mm -hmm. But truthfully, I will keep my mind set on him mm -hmm. so that we can trade. When I keep my mind set on him, the delivery is what? Peace. Mm -hmm. So judgment, you can judge. So you have managed the crisis. Mm -hmm. You are magisterial. Are you understanding? You're investing in that space, the thinking of God. You're investing in that space, the thinking of God. So I'm adjuring you by the masses of God. So if you learn to think like that, slowly, you will go faster. <laughs> Are you understanding? Because I know sometimes things barrage you in this city like that, one after another, if you could say so. But, we have to, but they're attacking, what they're, they're coming for the real estate of your heart and of your mind, to harden your heart and to blind your mind. To harden your heart and to blind my... Yeah, three weeks ago, I think we did meditation. You see that? Yeah. So meditation is pre-crisis sometimes. When you learn to meditate, pre -crisis. when the crisis hits, your mind is already what? Glued or what? Tied to how Jesus thinks. So your investment in a crisis should be the truth of God. You're trading. This is better than crypto. <laughs> Understanding. So your investment in the crisis is what? The thinking of God. Master, what must you do? Master, what do we do? It's a crisis. Jesus gives them his thinking. And they are what? Exonerated from the punitive measures of that crisis. Or they are kept sin in that crisis. Master, care us thou that we are not what? We are perishing. And he wakes up and says, oh, peace be still. He delivers his thinking in that crisis. And this guy says, what manner of man is this? Why? Because of just what he said? No, because of the effect of what he said. He invested in that crisis his thinking. Clear? Mm -hmm. So clearly speaking, if you do an audit of what has happened from last week until now, we've been in spaces, all of us have been in crazy spaces, but in those spaces, how many of us have invested the thinking of God? Because investing the thinking God in those spaces, you buy back time. You buy back opportunities. Ephesians chapter 5. Walk ye circumspectly as wise, not as fools, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. So you use the thinking of God to what? Buy opportunities. <laughs> Seasons. Seasons. Okay. So a season is a phase of time. Yeah, it's a phase of time. Number one, clearly, let's say God does not stay in time. But God is concerned about time. But God is not concerned about time like you. Are you understanding? God is not constrained by time. God is not worried about time. So God has no pressure of time. Are you understanding? But sometimes God amplifies his thinking through you, you who is in time. So the collaboration between your mind and God's thinking will keep you sane in time. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. In the fall of man, when the fall of man, time became a master. Before the fall of man, time was a servant. Mm. That's why we're always chasing time. Yes. <laughs> Seasons. Sometimes we feel condemned because I lost that season. And as I've told you, every season is what? Word governed. Mm. By the way, as far as time and seasons are concerned, there's no vacuum of a season. Every season is word governed. So you lose the word, you lose the season. Clear? So Jesus is driven into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It's like a class season. How does he manage that season? It is written. It is written. It is written. This is not sparring, partner. This is, this is heavyweight boxing. <laughs> Understanding? Round three, the enemy has been knocked off. He says he left for what? A season. The season. 
Are you understanding? So again, you activate the word, you regain the season. That's why God rewards you with time. He says, I will restore to you what? The years. What is years? Years is time. time. I will restore to you what? The years. This is what? Time. Of the cankerworms and the years of what? Of the locusts. Mm. So for us, for this to be effective, it has to be what? Word driven. Yeah? So for most of us, our times are facts driven. Because facts driven produces what? Fear driven. But then it happens to the best of us. Mm. Yeah, I know all of us have medals on that one. Mm. In some way or another. So a season is a face of time. Seasons are time and word based. They are time and what? Word based. It was a season of. The Bible will say it many times. It was a season of. Are you understanding? Paul will say in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 13, if you read it nicely, Paul is saying things like this. He says, and to me was given the stewardship of the dispensation of grace. A dispensation is a season, yeah? yeah. Paul says he was given what? He became, that word, that word stewardship is the word oikonomos, where we get the word economist. Paul became the economist of grace. And we, by extension, we are what? Economists of what? Of grace. Because we're still in the season of grace. Yeah. So Paul says he was handed the authority to steward grace in that dispensation. Right? Mm-hmm. So Paul was a custodian of the dispensation of grace given to him by what? By revelation. Paul says by revelation. He is given to him by what? By revelation. So Paul was told, manage that time, that season. That season called what? Called grace. How do you manage it? I've given you the instrument of what? Revelation. Are you understanding? Yeah. So all of us, in some way or another, God has given you a revelation. Whether it came through an idea or a notion or a word, if you could say so. But that word, how how you handle that word will also be seen manifestly how your time is governed. I know you have Rolodoxes, Notion, uh, you have uh, notebooks, you have whatever, journals. We love to manage our day. I'm planning for what? Tomorrow. I'm planning for next year. I'm planning for the quarter. But most of us do that outside of what? Yeah. And then this one becomes hard to find. You say, ah, if God can just give me a 72-hour day. (laughs) If God can give you what? A 72-hour day. That's why sometimes when you fast, time slows down. (laughs) And yeah. (laughs) Slows down. You begin to realize, what? I spent like, what, four hours just eating lunch? <laughs> because three hours is mshene. <laughs> One hour is to choosing, no, 30 minutes is choosing what to eat. <laughs> so Paul says, I was given, he says, this came by revelation. It was revealed to him, the word of God for that age. Are you understanding? Mm-hmm. So we had to ask ourselves, are we being efficient with our history? Because it means then cumulative seasons create history. What we call the history of this nation. Let's say this is Kenya. The history of this nation has what has had cumulative what phases or seasons. I understand it, mm. but what revelation do we have about those cumulative seasons? So are we being proper managers of our history? And if not, the future is tomorrow. How are we managing the next ten years? Or have we managed our histories around politicking and churching? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I understand me. That's what normally happens. And then we have interme- we have breaks of sports, Olympics, and whatever. If, and you know, you know let, let, let me give you uh, some small class on media a bit. For those who are old school people who used to buy newspapers. <laughs> when you used to buy newspapers, there's a, way, there's a way media is designed. If you have ever watched a documentary by a guy called, uh, uh, what is his name again? How do I, how can I forget? The, 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 the documentary is called The Manufacturer of Consent. Noam Chomsky, yeah. I watched it a long time ago. So Noam Chomsky is explaining how media is used as a governing tool. So that time he's talking about what? Newspaper. And he says, the first thing that happens in the headlines, the headline must be alarming. It must be the role of the lion that paralyzes you. Yeah, so you even have some people right now who are experts at copywriting headlines. 
because you have to control the common public psyche. Yeah? So it, become, it becomes less harsher as it goes towards the end. So are you understanding? So you go, so this is alarming. So you're saying, wow, things are crazy. People watch a headline and we have our own conclusions. Hey, have you seen how things are? They just read a headline. Yeah. Somebody crafted it. I understand. Yeah. Then you have your editorial that most likely goes into the expanding of the, yeah, yeah, this is uh, crazy. Hey, you have to prepare, prepare yourself for whatever, you know. Mm. And then before you realize you have uh, eulogies. <laughs> <laughs> it dampens you completely. Hey, guys yeah. are going. People are going. Yeah. Hey, guys are really going. <laughs> guys are really going. Yeah. And then towards the end, I start feeling crosswords. <laughs> Just to keep you enough to come back tomorrow, and then you have a sports page and entertainment. Now, yeah, yeah, to dampen the shock yeah. or to, for you to make you what? absorb the shock. Even, even television news, that's how it does. Yeah. We only have sports towards the end. Yeah. Unless you're doing, obviously, uh, uh, unless you're doing Olympics and the first thing that has, even if they put it as a headline, it will come towards the end. Yeah. So that's how it works. The enemy knows how to newsify people. How to newsify people so that people move what? People are begin to mismanage their what? Yeah. Times and season and therefore are unable to have what? The grace to live by. God, give me grace, give me grace. Yeah, you have a word. But there's a competition between the word and what? And news. Right now is what? The scrolling thing. Social media. All of us are there. <laughs> oh, have you seen how young, how young people nowadays are being... It is everywhere, even parents. Mm. Even parents. Anyway, mm. so Paul says, I was given what? I was given, I was told to be a custodian of the economy of grace. And this came by what? By revelation, by a word. Are you clear? Mm. The Bible says in Acts 13, verse 36. Acts 13, verse 36. After David had served, after David had served what? His generation. Just a season. After David has served what? His generation. That is a season. <laughs> so let me give you some revelation. <laughs> after David has served what? His generation. Yeah. In fact, another version says, after David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he died and he was buried with his fathers. He entered the hall of fame. Yeah? So I want to give you a revelation. Are you ready? So you can govern your seasons. Mm -hmm. Seasons are measured by service. Your contribution to a season is service. Let's, so let's try that. Let me, let me arrest this. Seasons are measured by what? Service, service, service. Oh, I want to become the MCA for this region. Hey, service. <laughs> oh, I want to become the MCS for whatever. Service. I want to become the president of whatever service. Seasons are measured by what? After yes. David had served, what did he serve? His generation. Mm -hmm. Or the purposes of God in his own generation. He died and was buried with his fathers. We, technically speaking, they're saying he finished. Yes. Yeah? Seasons are measured by service. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, David. Abraham's service is to produce Isaac. Isaac's service is to pass on the promise to Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob's service is to multiply it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Joseph's service is to preserve it. Yeah. Moses' service is to deliver it. Mm -hmm. Joshua's service is to appropriate the promised land to them. David's service is to establish the kingdom of God. Wow. So what is your service? <laughs> <laughs> What is what? Your service for us to be able to know that you are enjoying this season. <laughs> seasons and what? Service. So if you see season service, the equation is what? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Oh, you good and faith. Good and what? Good and faithful servant. Ever heard of that? Yes. Good and what? Faithful servant. Which means this is somebody who has managed the season properly. Paul would say, I have done what? Run the race. I've run my course. I've finished it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah? Mm -hmm. Paul says that he knows that I have served. Clear? Mm -hmm. So we have to be asking ourselves. Somebody is saying, oh, revival is coming, revival is coming. Revival is coming for people, to people, or it's going to be ignited by what? Service. Mm -hmm. People who are concerned about their generation, what is God packaging me to serve in this generation? That's how revival is coming. Mm -hmm. I understand it. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you package revival to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. Service. So we are seeing less of what? Service. And because we are seeing less of service, we are mismanaging what? Seasons. Because everybody thinks it's the season for you to shine. It's a season for you to trend. And I'm not saying servants don't trend. <laughs> I understand that. I'm not saying servants don't trend. But that's not their aim. Their aim should be to be what? Faithful. So, what is this thing you are faithful in? What is this thing you are faithful in? Why is Kenya the way it is? Because we lack what? Servants. So we are mismanaging what? Our seasons. When a servant, when a leader as a servant mismanages what? When, when a leader does not exhibit or embody what? Service, he will mismanage the season. And he'll be pl playing what? Catch up. All this time we'll be saying, oh, Kenya began with Singapore. Oh, Kenya began with South Korea. You know, you would be saying all those things, yeah? yeah? Why? Because we are poor what? Servants. We are not faithful. <laughs> I understand it. Yeah. So we can't blame. So now we're trying to catch up with Singapore. No, no, we should be catching up with the word for our service in our generation. The Singaporeans are being faithful yeah. with their servants yeah. to their generation. Yeah. We should find out what is ours and be faithful with it. In fact, if we begin to be faithful, servants will redeem seasons. Amen. Amen. We'll redeem seasons. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you understanding? Yes. Because we know who has called us. The one who has called us wants us to be what? Faithful. Okay. So after David had served his... You see, David is a king. David is a king. All of us want to be kings and priests. Mm -hmm. But David is a king. But God is, in, God is summarizing the life of David, I think through the, the words of Stephen. Eh? Mm -hmm. As after he had served, everything David is doing, this is the interpretation. This is the epitaph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this man served well. Mm -hmm. Clear? Yeah. So we learn how to serve. So that's why right now, in atrocious economy sometimes might find all of us sometimes tacking into self-preservation. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We should be the demonstrators of what? Service. Mm -hmm. You want God to supply all you need according to his riches and glory to the point where you're doing what? Taking care of other people? Service. Mm. Because faithfulness, you're not being faithful, you're being faithful to God. Mm -hmm. I understand it. You're not being faithful to people. You're being faithful to God so that you can serve what? People. And therefore manage what? Seasons. Are we okay with that? Yes. Today we'll finish quickly. Let's try. So, there are no ungoverned or vacuum seasons. So if you say, I, I don't even know what happened that season. So you, th you think it's a vacuum season. No, no, no. It was not a vacuum season. It is a word that was lost or mismanaged. Every season has a what? A governing word. So let's try Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, verse 2 and 3. Hebrews 11, 2 and 3 says, By faith we understand. Yeah? Have you ever heard of that? By faith we understand. I know Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things what? Not That's seen. It. And then verse 2 says, By faith we do what? We understand. Are we there? By faith, you do what? We understand. Okay. Nobody, nobody ever taught you that faith is an instrument of understanding. Mm -hmm. For you guys, you just know faith is an instrument of possessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I possess. I'm moving out in faith to possess. Yeah, you want to possess people's cars. <laughs> you know, Abraham had 3,000 camels. Yeah. Anyway, that's... That's a dealership, eh? Okay. So he says, there are no ungoverned or vacuum seasons. It says, by faith we understand that what? 
The worlds. So the, the word there is what? Worlds. Okay, this word worlds is the word ion. Yeah? It means ages. Ages. What then what? Oh, so, so these worlds or these ages. So if you see age, that is time, yeah? It's time, seasons. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Seasons. What do you want? We are framed. We are framed, we are forged, we are put together, we are intricately put together. By the what? By the word, word of God. So they were framed by what? The word of God. Word of God. So look at this. So he goes ahead, the one who wrote, the person who wrote the, word of Hebrew, the book of Hebrews, goes ahead to document. Yeah? He tells you, by faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, who else? Noah. By faith, Abraham. Are you seeing that? So every other, if you start from Abel, you go to Enoch. Enoch. You go to Noah. You go to Abraham. You see that? As far as that book is concerned, we normally call it the hall of faith. This is what? An age. By faith, Noah, an age. By faith, Enoch, an age. Yeah? And as far as God is concerned, principal history. As far as God is concerned, principal history was reliant upon what? With his characters. Alternative history was happening around the world. Maybe the Chinese were discovering gunpowder. <laughs> the Chinese were discovering cedars. God was interested in what? God has his history. He's a player in time. Mm. But his playing in time is different. Mm. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is important, because you see by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith, Sarah received, seed, received yeah. strength to conceive okay. seed. By faith, Abraham, having seen that the God was going to bring Isaac back from the dead, did what? Believed. Yeah. Are you that? So yeah. as far as God is concerned, that was principal history for him. Every other thing the Chinese the Syrians, the whatever, is happening. Yeah. But this is God's history. Wow. He's writing it. Uh -huh. Does it have mistakes? Yes. Why? Because human beings. Yes. <laughs> Abraham ducks a bit, finds Hagar, <laughs> brought back and panel beaten. <laughs> <laughs> That's God's history. That's yeah. God's history. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying this to encourage you because you are here sitting, yeah. thinking you're not relevant in God's history. Yeah. Number one. Mm. Number two, you are here sitting. Look at this. By faith. That chapter is supposed to encourage you about some things. You are here sitting, thinking that news is the history. News is history, but is not the history. Here, the history of God in Hebrews 11 is God tracing his seed. God tracing his seed. God tracing his seed. Okay, the entire Hebrews chapter 11. And then chapter 12 happens. There's one character missing in chapter 11. Yeah. Looking unto what? Jesus, the author and the finisher of? Our oh, so he's the one who even began the history of chapter 11. Oh. And he's going to finish it. Yeah. So Jesus comes in on the cross. Yeah? yeah. And dies and resurrects mm -hmm. and sits. Mm -hmm. And then he deposits his seed in you. So now you are seed sons. You are what? Seed sons. And now history is revolving around the attention we give what? The governing word of God. So the problem is this. There's, there's too much. There's too, <laughs> we are distracted as guys in the course will say kibau. We are distracted like crazy. So there's no, we're not following the frame. You're not following the frame of the age. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yes. <laughs> so the frame and the structure of every season is tagged to a listening ear and a speaking God. Does God still speak? Yes. yes. Has God spoken? Yes. So if he's delivering a word, a word that creates, creates what? An age. So you see there are two things for the purposes of our friends in Malaysia. So there's the word what? Worlds. Have you seen that? Which is aeon, which is ages, which is time, yeah? Or seasons. There's another word for worlds. There's another word, world. Which is what? Cosmos. Yeah? Cosmos. So when you're reading your Bible, you have to ask yourself, which world? So there's another word called what? Cosmos. 
Cosmos is the orderly arrangement of, orderly arrangement of things. So Cosmos is where you hear that, the prince of this world. Okay. Jesus says the prince of this world has been judged. The prince of this order, the prince of this arrangement has been what? Has yeah. been judged. Are you understanding? Yeah. yeah. So when you're reading your Bible and you have a Bible dictionary, you see, oh, there's a difference between the worlds. When the Bible says uh, things like what? Uh, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Mm -hmm. Ages are even. Because every age or every whatever, every bracket of time has a heightened culture. So there's a dominant culture that's happening in that age. Mm -hmm. So don't conform to it. Hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. yeah. Just like all of us are in the 21st century, but some of you guys love vintage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you are stuck in a particular age. Yeah? Yes. You have one foot in one age, <laughs> and another foot in this age. <laughs> are you understanding? Yeah. So the prince of this world, if you hear prince of this world is cosmos. So the uh, arrangement. So as church, when we are in an age, we need to control the cosmos. Mm. Yeah? Mind bending. I understand it. Mm, As yeah. church, when you are in a what? In an aeon, an age, we need to control what? The cosmos. Because the Bible says the prince of this world has been judged. Sin has been judged. Mm. Which means the prince of this world has been thrown into a crisis. Has been judged. It's a crisis. And the sin has been judged. And then you have the church. I will do what? I will build my church. How am I building my church? Upon what? A revelation, the word. You understand me? So that the church in an age can order the cosmos, the world. <laughs> so this is what? This is. <laughs> <laughs> so this is 2024. Yeah, this is 2024. So what the church does is this. This is how the church plays with politics. The church is desires more of power. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because it desires more for power, it, the, the church moves close to power, understanding? Mm -hmm. But loses influence for culture. I see that. Yeah. It moves close to power. I say, ah, oh, now we are, we are where? We have, we are in government. Yeah. But they have lost what? The influence of what? Of yeah. culture. And culture is dominant. Yeah. So people say, this is how the church looks like. Yeah. And most likely, one of the things about how the world views the church, they will always rate you, they will always rate you from the base SI unit yes. of how you're displaying your bad manners. Yeah. <laughs> So we're supposed to be in an age governing what? The cosmos. I understand me? Because history revolves around principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this age again, Aeon. Yeah? I told you last week, uh, somebody was saying, the Geneva Bible says, rulers of darkness of this age, it says the governors of age and age. So it means this is, this is the change. The change. Are you understanding? Yeah. I told you last week when you say rulers of darkness of this age, the word darkness there is what? One meaning is the shadow of error. It's like when you're programming, those who use Python or, <laughs> ana or Anaconda, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, when you're doing a coding sometimes, you can introduce what? You can deliberately introduce a bug. So he says the shadow of error, rulers of darkness of Egypt, they have what? They have the knack to introduce their thinking to govern people through an error. So we hear things like social architects, which means what? People who have thought and began introducing a particular kind of belief mm -hmm. that controls a particular kind of what? Market segment mm -hmm. or political segment. Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, now we are doing things according to this standard. And if you cannot go according to the standards, you can't read. Yes. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how the world is. That's how history is being played. So if we become insignificant in handling the word for an age, we come under the judgment of this prince. Mm -hmm. 
if we mismanage the word for an age, we come under the tyranny of what? Of the prince. The prince, both the Machiavelli one and the, this one. <laughs> have, you read the, have you read the book, The Prince? Have you read the book, The Prince? No. Okay. Have you read Ecclesiastes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just checking. <laughs> so even if you read the book, The Prince, by Machiavelli, you see how, how that kind of mind of the prince of this world thinks on how governments are run. Mm. Anyway. Are you clear? Mm. So the reason why God left a church that is built upon the revealing word of Christ mm -hmm. is so that he can take care of what? An age. Mm. Steward, an, steward an age and do what? Introduce what? An order. <laughs> steward an age, introduce what? An order. You cannot introduce a cosmos outside of what? The thinking of God. Mm. Clear? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so you can... It's okay. You can have all night prayer. <laughs> but when, we, when, when, when the day breaks, you need to do what? You need to think. <laughs> and then you need to do what? To legislate. Yeah. You said that last week. Clear? Mm. <laughs> so now we are being set up. Yeah. yeah. So now, now we are... Now, now we are what? Now we are being set up by God and he's scattering us. You see, the Bible says, Jesus told them, I was thinking about this thing, I was saying, why is there no witness? And I'm not talking about witness, meaning you're knocking door to door. That's old school witness. If God calls you to go knock door to door, it's okay by the way, go. He says, you shall tarry ye in Jerusalem. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you shall receive what? Power to be what? My witnesses. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be a witness without power. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's in your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. The word witness there is the word martus. Martus. Where we get the word martyr. Mm -hmm. So people think a martyr is somebody with a death wish. Mm -hmm. No. Martus is the word witness. Witness. And it means one who has what? Information and evidence. So he has information and evidence. The evidence is so compelling that he's willing to die for it. So when these guys were saying, Jesus is Lord, at that time when they were in Palestine, you are saying also, Caesar isn't. Are you understanding? Right now, I come here and tell you, yeah. And then we do the same, same things. God is good. Oh, and it's whatever. You know, you'll say all those things. Yeah. Nobody's coming to chop your neck. Yeah. <laughs> There's no threat. Yeah. But these guys, when they say they had information that Jesus is the Lord, he died, rose again, ascended. Mm. And we have evidence. Yeah. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. So it's so compelling that they're willing to die for it. Mm. That's why we don't witness. Why? Because it requires the power of the Spirit to deliver what? Info and evidence. Mm. So they are... F <laughs> they say, first eyewitness. Mm. They're the ones who wrote the testaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now you have been brought towards the end, Uko. The one who experienced Jesus otherwise. Mm. You're not there. They say you're a forensic witness. <laughs> you can analyze things and put mm. together the Holy Spirit is revealing to you. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is telling you, oh, in, he says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit is telling you. So everything Paul is doing is forensic. Mm -hmm. I understand it. Mm -hmm. So that's, 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 that's our kind of witness. Mm -hmm. And the expert witness like you guys are now brought into court and say, okay, this guy is so blood flowing and down. Christ being crucified. In fact, many of them ducked. It's only John who was there and the mother. Mm -hmm. And there's blood. Now, now you are forensic witness. A book test. Is it type Christ, type C? <laughs> How do you know it's type C? Because the Spirit of God is in me. <laughs> anyway. So you become a witness. But you become a witness because of what? So Jesus told them, and you shall be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. So the experience of power, the experience of power, 
was not temple restricted. Mm. In fact, the experience of power was when they were going outwards. Yes. I'm telling you the truth. You go in, you're in marketplaces. That's where you need power. Mm-hmm. You see, there's a way power has been displayed in a Bible study or in a service. Mm-hmm. That's the picture we have of power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Understand it? Yeah. So when we go out, we, do, we get ashamed mm-hmm. of our power, mm-hmm. of our brand. Mm-hmm. Say, hey, I don't. And God wants to exhibit the power what? in the streets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He wants you to be what? A witness. Mm-hmm. Dunamis. Yeah, he wants you to be dynamic. He wants you to be, he wants you to be a dynamite. <laughs> anyway, yeah. let's go back to seasons. So he says the frame and structure of every season is targeted towards the listening ear and the speaking God. That's why God is sending you out. Yeah? You find yourself going out. Why? Because your ear has heard. You cannot unhear it. <laughs> And he says, so help me God. The Bible says they were gathered together, John and Peter. They were flogged. They went back to their own company and prayed for boldness. And the place was shaken. Then they went out again. <laughs> yeah? Paul was the other notorious one. There's a place. You see, when Peter and James and John, at some point, the church is growing, Acts chapter 4, things are happening, there's a lot of drama, whatever. Guys are now becoming domestic, and this thing is becoming a mega church. Mm. And God is saying, These ones, mm-hmm. they're going to stay here for so long. Mm-hmm. I need to get somebody who will take this thing to the Gentiles. Mm. <laughs> Peter's even stumbling at what? The big screen. Mm. Mm. Will there be migration from Mara to whatever? <laughs> unclean, unclean, okay. unclean. Anyway, mm-hmm. let, me go, let me come back to seasons. So if you go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, you'll find those things. Matthew 11, 15. Uh, Revelation 2.29, you can write them down, Mark 4.23, and Revelation 2, verse 7. The point there being, there are no ungoverned seasons. Every season is governed by what? The Word of God. So faith is a substance of things hoped for. Yes, true, but by faith we understand. So if you look at here, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, that's our what? Age, age, age. So the vital person of interest in the history of God are people who moved in faith. Are you understanding? Yes. That's why you're being set up. Yes. Why? Because God wants you to be responsible for a word for this time in your industry. So you can do what? Create a cosmos. Through what? Thinking or legislating. Anyway, let's go quickly. So we are, as, we are as tuned to a season as we are to the word of the season. Are you clear? Mm-hmm. And God speaks to you guys differently. If we lose the word for the season, we lose the season. So the enemy steals seasons from us by stealing the word or making us nullify the word by the traditions of men. <laughs> and I said the traditions of men, they make the word of God of no effect. Now look at this. Let's, let's play it out. This is Jesus on the scene. Are you understanding? Yeah. These guys have been waiting for a Messiah to come. Yeah. So this is Jesus on the scene. So Messiah has come. Season. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. He's speaking the word. Mm-hmm. He's governing that season. These guys are saying, they're throwing bugs. They're throwing bugs at Jesus. <laughs> are you understanding? Yeah. They're introducing the traditions of men. So the season happened, but it didn't happen to them. It was stolen from them. Mm -hmm. It was stolen from them because they invested in that space alternative thinking Mm -hmm. called traditions of men. So Jesus says, I'll come like a thief. Ever heard of that? So most of us have postponed it in future. No, he came like, how how does a thief come? He don't notice. Mm -hmm. So he came to his own, but they did not do what? Notice, he came like a thief. Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. You did not what? Design the time of your visitation. Hmm. They are contending, introducing bugs. And they lost that season. The three and a half years he was here, they lost it. They couldn't see he's the one. But he was living the dream. (laughs) For those who are not here, get your tape. I'm saying tape. 
from Ann. He was living the dream. <laughs> he was crucified, yes, but he was living the dream. So that is it. That's how we are. The reason why I'm making this personal is because all of you most likely have notebooks and you have said, God told me A, B, C, D. That's the word. Okay, good. So you have the instruments of government. Yeah? But the sword and the constitution. <laughs> so now manage your seasons. Manage what? Your seasons. So, so the clarity, uh, so look at this, the clarity of any battle in your season or phases of life is known by the attack on the prevailing word. Are you understanding? So again, we are growing up, we're becoming mature by God's grace. So we are learning them. We are learning sometimes when attacks come, is is it's coming for the word's sake. So fortunately or unfortunately, you're the host of the word. Because God is incarnational. God is what? Incarnational. So when he wants to amplify his voice in the timeline called seasons or time, he puts it in you. And then you come out as what? The voice. Of, so he's so sure. He says, I will send my word. It will go forth. And it will accomplish that whatever what I send it to do. And guess what? You are that envelope where the word has been placed. I want to hear the voice of God. Yeah, go and sit. Go and sit with each other and share. Mm. Okay. You don't trust each other. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Go and buy a call and push and sit down and take a cup of coffee with each other. Maybe you'll believe that Eve is called of God. <laughs> Are you understanding? So he says, he says, the clarity of any battle in your seasons or phases of life is known by the attack on the prevailing word. Are you clear? Yeah, we need to know that. The Bible says in five, Ephesians 5, again, if you'll see, Ephesians 5, 16 to 17, it says, uh, walking circumspectly as wise, not as fools, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. Are you understanding? So you walk as wise. But there, he says, he says the, the enemy is coming to contend with the will of God. The will of God is revealed through the word of God. Are you clear? Yeah. So the will of God is an instrument of time management. Okay, clear? Pole pole. Don't worry, you're about to get there. <laughs> um, on the religious thing, is it, is it that um, as, as business people, as empl employees, as in any of our positioning, it just needs, we need to be bold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like sometimes we misinterpret witness, you know, to giving to be that. Yeah, which the thing is not giving a testimony the way we have been cultured. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord again. I am no. <laughs> now, when, now when, when, it, when it comes to that, by the way, and you have to do it, just do it. It does not, it does not remove anything. Yeah, it doesn't remove any melanin from you. It's, you still remain as powerful, as powerful as you can be. Yeah? But it's just being present. It, you become a vessel of manifestation a vessel of showing up of God. God does not show up. God sh will show up through you. Mm. He's incarnational. Are you understanding? Yeah. So that's the reason why you need boldness because you'll be terrified <laughs> mm -hmm. to show up mm -hmm. and believe that he's behind you or in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. You'll be terrified to say, from today onwards, mm -hmm. this will stop in this market segment. Uh -huh. Who does, this who does she think? Who does he yeah. think he is? Yeah? yeah? yeah. So... <laughs> You need boldness to do that. In fact, you need two things. You need humility and boldness. Yes. None of them cancels each other. Mm -hmm. Both of them are X. When you're handling small things, yeah? Mm -hmm. When you're handling small things, you need humility. Mm -hmm. But you need to, the boldness to announce them as big things. Yes. When yes. you're handling big things, yes. you need humility. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> 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 when you're handling small things, you need humility to handle small things, yeah? yeah. Because everybody's like, who is, who is this new kid on the block? Yeah. But you also need boldness to announce them as big things. Yeah. When you're handling big things, you still need both. Yes. Because you need to be audacious. Mm -hmm. You see, when big things, when the small things becomes big, you're already shaking. Yeah. Will I manage this thing? Yeah. <laughs> Will I manage this thing? Hey, can I even sleep? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> you begin to remind God, you know, you never sleep or slumber. <laughs> Lord, you never sleep or what? Or slumber. Both of us cannot be awake. 
I have to sleep. I need to sleep for tomorrow. Lord, I didn't know when I was asking for a dream, it's going to be this big. <laughs> so you need both when they're small. So the issue is this, the, in, the, the integer that connects both humility and boldness with small things or big things is faithfulness. Are you clear? So every progressive discovery of the eternal God uh, and his purposes, yeah, any, any progressive discovery, because sometimes we discover God. He says, I know God, I know God, I know God. Tomorrow you encounter him differently. He says, I used to think I know God. Hey, the place he has gotten me out of. Yes. Ah, now I know Jehovah, the most high. <laughs> Are you understanding? You voluntarily just begin to worship without a guitar, yeah. without lyrics. <laughs> so Jesus, you are, you're awesome. You're awesome. You used to be told in service, lift up your hands and praise. Your corporate. <laughs> and then he gets you out of somewhere. You just say, hey, hey, Jesus, you are. No music, no nothing. No maverick. No protocol, no whatever. Just say, Lord, where you've gotten me from? Only me and you know. <laughs> so every progressive discovery of the eternal God comes by the renewing of your mind. Comes by what? The renewing of your mind. Because what? Because we need to what? We need to, it, every discovery, because what's renewing your mind, we become stable and sober. We become what? Stable and sober in time. You're not carried away by stuff. You need to be stable. You need to be sober. Why? Because news might be happening concerning your industry. And you're thinking, I'm behind. When the will of God has rightfully placed you in that place, so that you can have what? You are in an age with a governing word, so you can do it. Introduce what? A thinking. Are you clear? Every thinking of God that he will count on you to introduce in a particular space will be revelatory. It's true. But it will also be what? We have process. Because not everybody just accepts the gospel like that. The gospel is good news. The evangelion. That which somebody has run with as a forerunner. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. So every governing principle from the word of God concerning your dream, where he has placed you, is revelatory. But it's also what? Process. Mm -hmm. So by this thinking is not by osmosis. You have to sit down. It's, it's relational because mm -hmm. some people have to be taught. Yeah. People have to what? To be taught. So Jesus comes in bringing good news, but he's going to different places. What? Teaching. Educating. Yeah. Teaching. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 3. You know it's <laughs> time for, time for. Is there time for this? Time for, you know that? Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Are you there? Yeah. What does it say? Let's try that one. As we bring the plane down. <laughs> Somebody's already screaming. <laughs> to every? Everything. To everything is what? Is to everything there is a season. A time for every, a time for every purpose. Yeah. I know you can, be very, you can be very surgical about those words and terms. Mm -hmm. But to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then now he begins. That's Solomon for you. Okay, let me give you some revelation. So Solomon has three books. He has Ecclesiastes. Yeah. He has Proverbs. And he has what? Song of Songs. Song. This is outer courts. Holy place. Most holy place. <laughs> Understanding? This is Solomon. Like, anyway, that's it. So this is Song of Songs. This is the book of Christ. Eight chapters. You can interpret it dispensationally. Eight dispensations. In here. This is wisdom. Proverbs. We have wisdom, yeah? yeah? Proverbs only has what? Two women. Two forms of wisdom. The seductive women. The seductress and the one we know. Everybody wants to be. Proverbs 31. It's a form of wisdom. If you look at this form of wisdom, and Proverbs 31 is not written for women. It's the queen speaking to his son. That's how it begins. 
the words of the queen to his son, Lemuel. Lemuel, not from Madagascar. <laughs> he said, this is it. I understand it. So there's two things. This kind of wisdom, the seductive one, which James says, the one James talks about, the one evil one. And this kind of wisdom, the godly wisdom. What does it do? If you place wisdom where that woman is in Proverbs 31, what do you see? Wakes up early in the morning, sits at the gates, does this, does that, you know? Anyway, one day, Ipo Siko. Are you clear? So he says there's a time for, there's a time for, there's a time for, there's a time for. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. So for you to enjoy a moment, for you to do what? Enjoy a moment, you have to have the revelation of the burden of that moment. What revelation is governing this moment? So Jesus is in Gethsemane. He says, Father, if it be possible, take this cup away. So if the Father does that, that moment is spent. He said, but not, not my will, but what? Yours be done. Why? He has the burden, or he has the revelation of the burden of that moment. So because of that, he can endure it. Paul will tell you, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. How are you enduring hardness? He said, you held onto that word. Oh, Timothy, those prophecies that were placed. That you, you know, remember you see some prophecies, Timothy, yeah, use those ones to contend and have a good campaign. You're holding onto them. You're crafting a strategy or what? Even remaining sin in that season. <laughs> so Jesus is in Gethsemane, Matthew 26. <coughs> Matthew 26, 36 to 46. He has a he has the revelation of the burden of the moment. So to everything, everything, a season. And time for every purpose. So the purpose of that place, the purpose of that place is a contest of wills. His will against the will of the Father. Are you understanding? So he will survive and endure that moment because he submits himself to the predominant will that is supposed to craft what? A thinking for that place. So he has maximized the use of what? That time. Making sense? Yes. Are we okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so mistakes and sins are always found in seasons we did not design or ignored the governing word for that moment. <laughs> Second, Second Samuel 11, you know it. Second Samuel 11, verse 1 and 2. David, classical. It was a time of the season when kings went to war. Mm -hmm. These guys were like, yeah, they were just like gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> they were just like gladiators and the, and the, and the, but David decided to do what? Stay at home. Yeah. He became the stay at home king. <laughs> <laughs> do you see what happened? Yeah. yeah. He did not govern that season. And then Luke 19, 45, I think he says, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, we did not do what? Design the hour of your visitation. So they missed it. They missed the mark. That's what we call sin. They missed the mark. They made mistakes. They, they undervalued the Christ. The Christ they were really waiting for was hidden in plain sight. Are you understanding that? So mistakes and sins sometimes are what? Are found in seasons we did not what? Design. So sometimes we say, Lord, I need restoration. Lord, and in this situation, he says, okay, fine. And then he reactivates that word he gave you for that point. But because it's something that does not look very glamorous mm -hmm. or it's shining, yes, what happens? I uh, know this, this, delivery, this deliverance had to be a bit more dramatic. Yeah. He just takes you back to that word because the word of God, <laughs> the word of God has no expiry date. Mm -hmm. Understand it? Yeah. If you manage it, it's always new. So the problem with us is we become familiar with it. What my name will tell you in a book called The Ministry of the Word, he says, when the light of the revelation of God comes into your heart, it shines, it beams. You get it. You say, ah, I can, I've gotten it. But the mind is trying to still do it, to tie itself around it. Then the next day, it becomes a little bit more weaker. So it has to be what? Reactivated again. You have to be energized again to see that light. So something I taught last week on Sunday, if I speak the same thing to go and teach it somewhere else, it's not automatic that I'll enjoy the same what? Grace and glory. If I don't renew the light of that word in my heart. So we are beings that are supposed to be the best custodians of the word of God. All is renewing. 
always elevating it, always giving it attention. Faith is a tool of seasons. Yeah? Ever heard of the word kairos? Yeah. Kairos. Faith is a tool of seasons, or the kairos of God. Jesus, Jesus, in the book of John chapter 7, the brothers of Jesus tell him to go to Jerusalem because of the Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus says, my time is not yet. So Jesus is operating not on the chronos why, chronos, chronos things, chronos way of things. He's operating on what? The kairos way of things. That's why sometimes you might be in a space that is looking so defeated and asphyxiated, but you embrace a word, a salvaging word of God. And things are accelerated because now you're overridden what? The time. Because that time most likely has been brought by the constraining prince of the cosmos on the things we believed. Your believing has been graduate, has been has graduated to combine with the revelation of God and say this thing can happen. The word of God is not active until the being who hosts it is active. Yeah? yeah. So you can't just say, yeah, God has sent his word and in and he has incarnated it in you. But for that word to be active and a live wire, you need to act on it. Yeah. Today, if you hear my voice, do not do what? Hide in your hands. I'm not just cutting a script. I'm actually telling you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? So Hebrews 11, faith. is. You are saying by faith, by faith. So faith is an instrument. You say you see things using the eye of faith. And you act on it. You see things, you act on it, and you redeem a time. And you redeem a time. Moses tried to enter into this thing without faith. He killed a man. You understand it? But when he kicked it into faith, he became a deliverer. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he is able to say, okay, I will stop calling myself the son of what? Pharaoh's daughter. Clear? So I think we've seen something. Okay. (laughs) In Jesus' name. So what happens when God speaks? Because he's speaking, and he has spoken to you, and he continues speaking. You open your Bible, he speaks. You sit in your car, he drops a word in your heart. He drops your word in your mind. When God speaks to you, he speaks above the natural. When God speaks to you, he speaks above the natural. When God speaks to you, he speaks above the natural. 1 Corinthians 2.14 The natural mind cannot understand the things of God. Are you clear? That's why when God speaks to you and you receive that word, your mind is renewed. So your mind receives what? An upgrade. Somebody said, a renewed mind will always look at things of God as logical. Yeah? And a renewed mind will say, this is logical. This doesn't, does not make sense. So we renew our minds to be in congruence to the logic of God. In any case, without the Logos, which is Christ, we can't have the logic of God. In fact, we can't have the logic of anything. Psycho-Logos, bio-Logos. It's the Logos himself. It's Jesus Christ. It makes what? more sense. So when God speaks, he speaks what? Above the natural. So you want more time? Start learning how to use the word he has given you to govern us. Clear? When God speaks, he speaks in the context and the space of the natural. Let me explain that. So God wants to speak to you. He doesn't speak in heaven, Uko. <laughs> yeah, these guys have to download this thing. No, he speaks to your inner man, your spirit, yeah? So, but your spirit is encased in your body. So he speaks in the natural, but he speaks above the natural. I understand it. When I say he speaks above the natural, it means above the natural what? Thinking. But he speaks in your context. It is a word that is meet for that circumstance. So relevance is not necessarily being in tune with how the world works per se. Relevance is being in tune with the governing word of God for that moment. Clear? Number three. When God speaks, he sets the stage for history making. When God speaks to you and you act upon it, he sets the stage for what? For history making. You know, so Genesis 3.15, ever heard of it? Genesis 3.15, he told the woman, the seed of the serpent shall do what? Bite. 
and the seed of no the seed of the serpent shall do what shall bite and the seed of the woman shall do what crash, crash. history began mm. from a point the history of fallenness began mm. until the cross yeah. so from that genesis 3:15 history was happening that that pronouncement was fulfilled on the cross so God set history in motion through just what, that one statement. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's a small thing. So most of us are here. Are you understanding? But between here and the cross, or whatever you call the cross in your journey, there's history to happen. And as you said in the first class, we're living the life. <laughs> that's, that's the word for today. We're living the dream. <laughs> Hebrews 11 Again, two and three. By faith, God what? By faith. By faith we understand that the ages were formed and fashioned by the spoken word of God. So history is being made. Are you understanding? So now he has more servants who are what? Faithful. So they can do what? Manage what? Seasons. History is supposed to be exciting. <laughs> Understanding? It's like a boxing match. Your heat, blood is coming out, but you're saying, I'll have to win this thing. I'll have to win this thing. So all of you guys are history makers. Are you understanding? Yeah. Seasons. You're custodians of seasons because God has put interesting dynamic works, words in your hearts. The Bible says you are God's workmanship. The word workmanship there is the word poema, which means masterclass. Are you understanding? Yeah. And see, God's masterclass is not found in a museum. Masterpiece, I mean masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. God's masterpiece. See, God's masterpiece are not found in museums. They are found what? They are live and already in history. Clear? So that's seasons for you. That is what? Seasons for you. That's the word I had for you. I have tried to contend for this word by God's grace. And I thank God he has delivered. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify your holy name. I am praying for these people. These few people, those who are here and those who are far in different lands. I'm praying for them, Jehovah, my Father, for the seasons. Not just for the seasons, I'm praying for them to have the wherewithal to host your word, to govern their seasons. None of them is going to be late for anything. Why? Because your word is a word that fulfills that which you have sent it to do. None of them, Jehovah, my God, is going to be disenfranchised because your word comes as a full package. I'm praying for them to have compelling information and evidence so that they can become your witnesses in bearing that word so that their seasons may come with fullness, not just to preserve themselves, but to be deliverers of other people also. I'm praying for them to be servants who are faithful to manage seasons. I pray even, my Father, for people who you have put in different places in this nation. I'm, act I'm praying that you activate in their hearts that, that gene, that DNA of being servants to serve people, to serve people, to serve people. And as they serve people and they are faithful in serving people, they will redeem time. We will accelerate. We are not in competition with any country. We are in competition with the governing word you have placed upon our hearts. So I'm praying, awaken the church to be, to be clear concerning what you have placed in their hearts concerning this nation. That is where, my Father, our intercession begins, Lord. I pray, Jehovah, my Father, for this, your people, my Lord, that they will have joy in each of their seasons. And sometimes when things are damp, I pray that you give them the word that preserves them, the word that preserves their mind, and the word that preserves their heart. So, Lord, we look forward to the quickening, the quickening of things. You said you will make things hastily, hastily in righteousness. I, see, I pray for accelerated processes, why? Because these are going to be the custodians of your word. Because you say the word of God is quickening. It's alive. It sets aside spirit from soul, born from marrow, and thoughts from intense. These ones are the holders of that word. These ones are the people, my father, who you have chosen. And those who are even far in other lands. We pray for their seasons and times. That they may be congruent to the timing of God and to the governing principle of your word. So Jesus become preeminent as the logos in the hearts of men become preeminent on their lips when they confess and say things. The notions, the ideas, the imaginations need to be full of you so that when they say things, seasons serve them. We bless you and magnify your holy name in this day and age. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen.
good 